What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Los Angeles of Havoc. Welcome to this week's episode of Pieces of Me. And uh, it's the last week of November, and don't think I forgot. This week, we're going to be doing an Ask Lay, my monthly Q&A. So, got, a, got an interesting lineup of questions. Uh, first and second question from my homegirl, Miss Rhymes. What frustrates you the most about music, and what do you think makes you a good artist? Or... What do you think makes a good artist? Okay, so there's a lot of things that frustrates me about making music or music in general. I'd say the most frustrating thing is, um, I guess, the business. Just it kind of that kind of just takes away from it sometimes, and it's just kind of a struggle to. Uh, move forward with the creative process when you're stressing about uh how to get yourself out there and how to market your stuff and you know having to go from that to then go back like yay let's make music you know like um it's very difficult um but i have awesome fans like y'all that help me stay motivated to continue to do what i'm doing um what i think makes a good artist um i think Talent being the biggest thing, um, I think talent, drive, passion, uh, and a willingness to pretty much go, this is going to sound very, very, very cheesy, but a willingness to kind of go the distance, uh, go whatever mile you need to go uh, to get to where you want to be, um, and never sacrificing who you are and what you stand for, what you feel like you represent to get to that place. Next question from Q. Okay, so next, this her question is, when you have writer's block, how do you go overcome it? Sometimes I, and this is gonna sound bad, um, there's a lot of different takes on as far as like writing. A lot of people feel like you should always write, you should always be doing something related to your craft if you wanna actualize it but for me when i have writer's block i don't like to force anything because it's almost certainly going to come out garbage um or i'm not going to be happy with it and i'd rather just take my time with the track or with whatever i with with whatever it is i'm writing so i can bring out the best that i have to offer every time and um sometimes i get lucky sometimes i you know i can write non-stop or whatever and it's just awesome and then sometimes I sometimes I don't feel inspired enough to like you know pick up a pen or my phone and uh, I'm not I don't have any beats or whatever like um, whatever the case is I'm, you know uh, sometimes I'm just you know ready to hit the booth uh, with like 20 songs and then sometimes it's just like a month or two where I'm just like eh, I'm writing but I got a lot of stuff unfinished um but a lot of times i'll just i'll just beat hunt you know i'll look for different instrumentals or i'll try to like check out some uh industry beats and see if there's anything that i kind of want to rap over just to get my feet wet just you know until i you know have the urge again to make a song um and that's that's my that's my way people say you should always write or always record and whatever but uh sometimes forcing shit isn't good um unless you're just starting i guess that makes sense if you're just starting you know so i guess if you're an up and coming artist and you um are just working at you know ironing out your style and figuring out who you are by all means right 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 but if you're established and you're confident in who you are as an artist uh, do not force anything because it's not going to come out the way you want to and you'll save yourself some time there. <laughs> uh, my friend Lexi asked, what's my favorite color? My favorite color is blue. <laughs> Next question. If you could collab with only one famous producer, who would it be and why? And this question was asked by my homie, uh, Charles Reed. Um, I don't know how to answer this question <laughs> um not only because i i follow a lot of artists i don't um i don't follow producers as much i mean 
I feel like stylistically speaking, um, and what I've heard on Empire, I feel like, you know, and just in general, like a person that has a really good grasp on how to make music that's in my style, you know, where you can have like real street heavy or you can have nice synths or you can have some R and B or some pop or whatever, like a really versatile style, I'd say Timbaland would be awesome to just get in the studio with and figure out what I could create with him just because I mean I feel like he's a genius um I'd say yeah Timbaland or and just uh, just because it's a given Dr. Dre <laughs> last but not least um my homeboy Sin never disappointing with the deeply philosophical questions it's probably gonna take up a long time um he asked me why do you think people have shifted from caring about words to a song to just caring about the beat and or hook? And since that has occurred, why do you as an artist who strives to go mainstream still pride yourself on being lyrical? That is a hell of a question. Okay, answering it in two parts. I think, um, I think caring about lyrics versus beating a hook, I think it all... I think it all comes down to the generation you're talking about. Um, my generation, 90s babies, 80s babies, you know, we came up where there was kind of a healthy combination of both. Like you had your, you had great beats, great lyrics, great songwriters, you know, you just had a combination of just everything that made music pop. So you had so many great artists in these eras. Um, and even beforehand, like back in the 50s or whatever, you had great songwriters and you had very talented singers and stuff like that, but nobody was really, there wasn't a lot of like singers that were also songwriters and it was very rare. Um, but you know, you know, the 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, as you get closer to now, you know, you have more, um, especially when you're dealing with rap music, you have a lot more artists that are writing and stuff like that. But, um, in our case, our generation, we have, uh, we came up on lyrics, um, and that as a rapper, lyrical content has always been very important. What you're saying, because um, that's kind of representative of who you are as an artist, where you're from, uh, what you stand for. Basically, it's kind of you know just your identity. Um, I think people now care more about the beats than the hook because people aren't really people aren't really listening to the songs because let's face it, if, um, if people were really paying attention to don't stop, pop that, pop that, don't stop, pop, they'd be like, okay. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you have a lot of basically just very intricate dance music, you know, all the, all the beats and stuff like that, that are played on the radio stuff for the clubs, you know what I mean? And that's dope. You know, I mean, I remember hearing songs on the radio and, um, when I was a kid in high school and stuff like that and just can't wait to, you know, go to the school dance and, you know what I'm saying, you know, get my groove on to, <laughs> you know, get low or something. But obviously, if you're looking at the lyrics to get low, I mean, it's, you know, it's not something of sustenance and it's definitely not the best track whatsoever. It's not representative of, you know, what we would want, you know, said about our mothers or sisters or daughters or whatever but it's i mean it is a good song for what it is um but again a lot of what drives that track is the beat you know what i mean and the medley and the hook like get low get low get you know i mean it's just it's something to get the party started um <clears throat> and again at that point you're not really listening for lyrics but then you have artists uh that are lyrical like you got m you got Kendrick, you got J. Cole and Jay-Z and stuff like that. And those are the artists you tend to listen to when you're driving your car or when you're going through some shit and you just really kind of want to sit down and center yourself and really kind of go into thought about whatever it is you're going through in life. You know, I always, uh, you know, I would always make myself a nice little mix CD. And um, when I would go through things like emotional situations, I would actually go for those uh, I would go for those um, songs that were more emotional and more lyrical because I felt like they could speak to me and speak to uh, whatever situation I was going through. And 
helped me through that situation because I might not have had anybody there to talk to. I I went through a lot of situations where I felt like I was very alone and um, nobody really around me would understand the situation. Um, so, so yeah, I think, oh, roundabout. Um, yeah, I think people, I don't think it's that people care more about uh, the beat and the hook versus the lyrics. I just feel like, you know, there's songs that are for listening to and then there's songs for partying to. And that's okay to an extent. It's just that you got to know the difference. You know what I mean? You can't... The problem with a lot of commercial hip-hop uh, that it is just the beat and a hook is that that's, you know, because that's what people are playing the most on the radio, people are starting to believe that that's what rap is, and it's not. That's not what hip-hop is. It's, you know, it's a small section of hip-hop. Just like, you know, you wouldn't classify rock as just punk rock or emo rock or whatever. You would, you know, rock is... A umbrella, you know, and you have punk rock and you have emo rock and you have, you know, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Me as an artist, I pride myself on being lyrical because that's what I identify with. I'm not, I'm not a street nigga. I'm not out here trapping or any of that shit or whatever. And it's kind of a, you know, I'm not gonna stray away from who I am or what I feel like I represent, you know, I feel like it's important uh, for me to tell a story with my music. And if that's, you know, if that's going to be, you know, whether it's going to be something like in the moment um, that I just released or don't stop, keep going, you know, those are still me, you know, I mean, I would be in that don't stop, keep going situation. If, that, if the situation presented itself, that's something I could see myself going through. Um, but also, um, you know, you have like Dorian Gray, for example, you know, like that gave me a chance to kind of really experiment with my storytelling abilities, lyrical speaking, lyrically speaking. And you have songs like Dorian Gray, where I'm really talking about my life. But then you know, on the other hand, you have uh, Monster in the Mirror, where I'm talking about having fun. But even in Monster in the Mirror, I culminate that with looking at yourself in the mirror and seeing the monster you've become. You know, so I don't know. I I think that to stray away from being lyrical and telling stories and everything like that, that would be like me smacking every single one of my fans in the face. And that's not something I'm planning on doing because you guys are my lifeline. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I hope I answered those questions. Um, I hope you guys take something away from it. And um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, I'm really excited for some things I got coming on in the works. Uh, you guys can go to my website and check out the photo section and see pictures from my video shoot with Cray, FKR. Um, Tunnel Vision should be coming out soon. Um, as soon as I have a date, I would let you guys know and announce it. It's going to be dope. My boy Secret shot it and is editing it. And it's going to be phenomenal. Money, Sex, Music, Lies is coming soon. It's going to be a dope album. So, um... That being said, hope everyone has a happy Thanksgiving and uh, everybody be safe during the Black Friday shenanigans and above all else, have a great time with your family and uh, enjoy.